Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the Volkswagen Polo. I know we have reviewed this car a million times already. Straight away we are going to go to the biggest change in this vehicle which happens to be the engine. Yes, it's an all new unit. There is insulation right there as well. But everything else remains the same on the Polo which was actually the changes which were done recently only with the GTI inspired front. Of course, the lights don't get LEDs which is very unfortunate. In fact, there's no projector setup either. There's a fog lamp with the cornering function. Grill looks nice, the honeycomb treatment, the VW logo and there is nothing else at the front other than a towing hook to talk about. They put this black cladding on the front. In fact, that cladding is there on the side as well. Yeah, the cladding is here too and it's extended to the rear which sort of a diffuser treatment. This blue color looks really nice on this vehicle. In fact, this car has a very unique feature. In fact, all VWs have it. Just keep this button pressed and all the windows roll down of the vehicle. That is super cool. Here Neha opened the windows so you can get an airy feeling. Meanwhile, there's no sunroof, obviously. So that is one of the ways to get an airy feeling. The tires are really nice. I love them, but there are no rear discs on offer. The tire size happens to be 195, 55, 16. In fact, the tire profiles are a little weird. The 15 inch tire has a smaller profile. Yeah, 185, 60, 15. That's kind of weird. Meanwhile, at the rear, you see that cladding has been carried over to give you a diffuser sort of a treatment. This is fake, of course. The exhaust is somewhere hidden below. Yeah, there is somewhere the exhaust. If you can see it spotted on the left side, car auto locked which is going to unlock it for the moment and uh, let me quickly give Neha the key so Neha one second let me roll up the windows so the windows are rolling up now the press of a button this feature was there in the Skoda Octavia the first generation also I remember 2001 when I was in school I had gone to see it no clutch pedal rest just you can turn on the car like that you can turn on the air conditioning and cool yourself for the moment yeah the lights look nice at the rear too TSI written right there so the polo looks very nice and classy the design is dated but still doesn't feel so there's a spoiler there's an antenna right there and i love the fact how you can open the boot by pressing this button the boot is 280 liters in terms of size but the spare wheel happens to be a 14 inch so cost cutting has been done there yeah that is a 14 inch tire now honestly it's more to do with the fact that a full size spare wheel will obviously not fit inside 175 70 14 is the size of the tire now this seat can be pushed forward there's no split seats as such just in one full way you can push it forward you pull this lever on either side and then you can increase the boot carrying capacity of this vehicle now the problem with the polo one of the biggest problems happens to be the fact that there is very little space at the rear everything is very black actually door pockets are very slim and uh, there is no center headrest so vw knows a center passenger cannot sit because the cabin isn't wide enough and there's a hump there as well but the problem is that if there is no center headrest and the hump you should obviously put a yeah a center armrest but that's also not there so here you see there's actually a cup holder it seems to be like an afterthought there's a rear ac vent as well scooped out seat back now can you turn off the air conditioning for a moment so scooped out seat back yeah that is good for knee room but leg room is not much and for a tall passenger honestly my head is scrubbing against the roof so not much amount of headroom funny thing this is a german car german people are tall but still all these issues are there in this vehicle here we go otherwise the seat cushioning is pretty good and headrests are adjustable both the headrests at the rear are adjustable the seat recline angle is also fine parcel shelf has space to keep stuff too there's a hook here along with the handle in fact there's a hook here as well coat hook on both the sides that is so they have got that symmetry right you can see the dashboard well it looks the same as before nothing has changed as such now the problem with the polo is that it misses out on a ton of features when i say ton it doesn't get keyless entry it doesn't get push button start it doesn't get a wireless charger this car doesn't even get traction control anyways traction control is useless so good it doesn't get it but you have to unlock the car manually and you have to insert a key there as well there's a dead pedal right there and uh, all the windows are one touch up down this is obviously the controls for locking unlocking the vehicle and this is the control for the outside rear view mirrors and you can obviously close the mirrors as well if you want to close them while parking that can be done too so that's again a cool feature seat is adjustable in multiple ways but you know there's good amount of cushioning and overall quality of the seat is nice but over here you see it narrows up so Around the shoulder area, it could have been broader for broader frames like me. Like, I'm of course hitting the gym every day. I'm just kidding. This is the controls for the lights, the headlights, of course. Uh, yeah, this is for high beam. And when you pull it once, that's for the front fog lamp. When you pull it twice, it is for the rear fog lamp. Yeah, you can see the rear fog lamp. Can you spot it? It's only on one side. It is on the right side. This is the rear fog. And it gets reverse parking sensors as well. But ironically, it doesn't get a reverse parking camera, which VW has actually removed from this car. That is ridiculous. I so yeah, the dashboard has a lot of hard touch plastics. 
but that said uh, the design is nice it feels solid look when i close the door you can hear the thunk proper thud when you close the door auto dimming inside your view mirror there's a light placement here there's no mirror on the driver's side because the driver is cool enough not to look at himself but there is a toll receipt holder but we have got fast tech so who cares about that there's a mirror here because the co-passenger needs to look th at themselves in the mirror all the time and there's a handle here there's no handle on the driver's side of course seat belt does not get a height adjust which is a bummer and everything is the same as before what are we discussing honestly so the glove box is actually big enough and you know what put your hand inside and see yeah it is a cool glove box okay let me close it third is always present whenever you shut anything in a vw car in fact the quality of the cabin the buttons everything is really nice and supreme this is for the defogger this is for the hazard light now it's a all black cabin but to remove that monotony they put this grayish finish here on the center console and around the ac vents which is sort of a silver vent rather silver surround and there's this beige treatment upwards on the roof so yeah sort of a mixed color bag here but could have been a little bit more lively like i told you auto dimming inside your view mirror which is a nice touch there's storage space here there are twin cup holders as such there is a 12 volt charging socket as well there's a usb there's a aux there's a sd card holder and automatic climate control air conditioning air conditioning actually works really nice now this is a small touch screen infotainment system which happens to be 6.5 inch unit kind of on the smaller side but you know what it gets android auto it gets apple carplay it gets mirror link as well but it doesn't get a reverse parking camera like i told you it gets reverse parking sensors though but a reverse parking camera is a must at this price point the cluster is basic like it is earlier it's classy vw at its best and you've got a multi information display which gives you a lot of information 9.2 km per liter is the mileage right now distance to empty i got this car brand new i actually removed the seats here on the instrument cluster because that's how new the car is you get the usual details like obviously fuel efficiency meter time clock telltale lights and the lights and you can obviously press these buttons to reset stuff as well these are actually the controls to navigate to the multi information display these are the controls for the audio system and this is the control for the cruise control it gets a cruise control system this is the control for the wipers the wipers work really well good amount of spray on offer yeah plenty of spray on offer in fact if you want to use the rear wipers you have to push it that words so we are going to do that for a moment and there you see there is the water coming oh my god the spray is so much i can take a bath in it that's the level of spray on offer now it gets a flat bottom steering wheel it's a leather wrapped steering wheel nice stitching here as well and the horn i think it's a little coffee but it's nice what do you think you like the horn skoda cars also have a good horn as such so there is some amount of storage space here and there is storage space below the front center armrest as well which you can adjust like this if you feel the need that is Now the good thing is that the steering wheel is adjustable both for reach as well as rake so yeah it gets multiple adjustments too which is a nice thing and this screen is nice slick easy to use i think i didn't shut the wipers yet okay that's a little bit of a confusion happening right there so now if you could play an audio right away that would be great so here we go yeah baby Audio quality is really nice. It gets rain sensing wipers too. In fact, the rain sensor. I'll just show it to you where it is. The rain sensor is placed right here. So this is the rain sensing wiper of the car. Where can you guys see it? Because I cannot see it so bright right now. now. This is the rain sensor actually for the rain sensing wipers. Yep. And that's about it. There's not much to talk in this car because it doesn't have any features as such. So which means that there's only one thing which we can do, which VW cars do best, which is let's get driving. Does the Polo still have the charm with a downsized petrol engine when compared to the old 1.2 TSI? Let's get going into first gear and uh, yeah we'll put the handbrake down now what are you doing Let's get going You can see the steering is actually quite light uh not Hyundai light but still light enough so easy to twirl the steering wheel at lower speeds and then of course turning the car around the corner is so much fun because this has so much eagerness on offer but straight away in second gear I'm going to open the taps of this motor and off we go there the motor loves to be revved indeed but you know we are just going to get into third gear and drive this car with how most people are going to drive which is relaxingly and there you notice something even in fifth gear okay it's six speed gearbox so in sixth gear it's sticking around slightly above 1000 rpm around i think 1200 rpm at 60 km per hour very refined motor no hesitation no judder none of that nonsense just so smooth 
बोलो बट हेयर लाइज द प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज देर इज बॉटम एंड लैग Even if I get full on the throttle, it's not really moving as such. It really needs to reach somewhere around two and two and a half thousand RPM to get going fast enough. And slowly, it's building the pace. But that's not the way to drive it. The best way to drive it is downshift and then whack open the throttle. Because right now, see, the motor is pulling decently, but that enthusiasm is missing because mid range is where this car really shines. And that's the reason why this car's in gear acceleration isn't the best. So you want to make a quick move here, downshift into second, whack open the throttle. Yeah, baby, six and a half thousand RPM plus reaches 100 kilometers per hour in second gear itself. That is the thrust from this TSI motor. So let's just compare it with the obvious rival, which happens to be the 1.2 liter TSI engine, which was there in the old Polo GT TSI, which used to produce the same 100 and actually the same 175 newton meters of torque. But this one gets that 175 newton meters, 250 RPM later. That is between 1750 to 4000 RPM, which is a wide torque band. Power is increased by 5 horsepower, which means that this car produces 110 horsepower when compared to the old GT TSI. Is 105 horsepower, which means that there's slight more grunt. But the big difference is now I'm driving a manual, and that's the reason this is one full second faster than the old GT TSI because the DSG lag is not there. You can launch this car aggressively. Trust me on this. Yeah, you can feel a bit of the stiffness because the suspension is on the stiffer side, which means it's sort of a European balance of the suspension, which means that you really can't go fast over bad roads because when you do, you can feel a lot more inside the cabin. Best to curtail your speeds over bad roads, otherwise. You just feel a little bit too uncomfortable. However, on the flip side, the good thing is the high-speed stability is phenomenal. This car stays glued to the road without any hesitation whatsoever. In fact, it is so glued to the road that you would never ever feel what speed you're doing. This car can do a top speed of 200 kilometers per hour on the speedometer itself. Well, that is fast. Braking performance is also very nice indeed. In fact, the brakes are so good that yeah, that's how good the brakes are. Sure for it. Into first gear, no traction control. Bullshit. Driving the motor revs till 4,000 RPM, and there it launches 50 kilometers per hour in first gear. Second gear will take you past 100. Actually, bang on 100 kilometers per hour. It reaches from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in under 10 seconds. That's how blisteringly quick this vehicle is. In fact, this is the fastest hatchback in India right now. That is the level of punch on offer, and it is such a delight driving this car. Only thing, the gearbox could have been slightly smoother. Has some amount of notchy feel to it. The clutch is decently light, not very heavy, but I am just so used to upshifting into higher gear. I know I'm in fifth gear. Car feels nice. You feel a little bit of the unrefined nature of the three-cylinder engine because obviously, uh, three-cylinder engine doesn't have a counterbalancer. This one does not have a counterbalancer, so it just has that vibe. Especially at idle, you can feel a lot more. It's not as refined as the old 1.2 TSI for sure. That said, changing direction not an issue at all because this engine just begs to be revved hard into the mid range. So low end isn't great. Mid range is fab. It has such a high punch in the mid range, and of course. The top end is also very sweet. It becomes quite vocal in the top end in a good way. Sounds nice too. Meanwhile, you can see the steering offers good amount of feedback. I mean, it weighs up at high speeds but doesn't have much feel as such. So not the most feelsome steering, but definitely a great steering for driving on Indian roads because around the ghats you will never feel nervous at high speeds. This is so sure-footed in that sense. Anyways, here we are into first gear, revving the motor, 4,000 RPM and. What a brilliant engine! This engine puts a massive smile on your face. This one liter TSI engine is so good. It's so good that it's won the International Engine of the Year award as well, and it's got turbo charging. It's got direct injection. In fact, TSI means turbo charged stratified injection. Honestly, what a motor! Brilliant in terms of performance. Absolutely sensational. In fact, it's more fuel efficient than the MPI as well by under half a kilometer. That is 0.49 kilometers per liter. More efficient. This one produces 50% more power, almost 50% more power than the MPI, and almost 100% more torque than the MPI. That is a big difference. Yeah, indeed it is. Lane changes and all are so much fun. It maintains its balance around the corners. In fact, body roll is supremely well contained. Super duper control from the car. A lot of grip as well. In fact, it has a ton of grip around the corners, 
which puts a massive smile on your face. This guy loves to be cornered. That is the level of balance and poise around the corner. Super duper well. In fact, it weighs 1072 kgs, which is almost, I think, maybe 200 kgs more than the Maruti Swift. That is a lot. But still, it's faster than the Maruti Swift by 2.2 seconds. OMG, that's brilliant, right? Anyways, here's the tunnel. Here's the window. Into first gear. Revving the motor. And... can't hear much but look at the balance of the car is absolutely sensational now obviously because of the stiffer suspension it thuds through what a sound what a brilliant motor indeed i love this engine it's so good but in the real world don't expect that 18 point uh, somewhere around 2 uh, sorry 18.24 kilometers per liter do not expect that in the real world it will return somewhere between 10 to 12 kilometers per liter but you should not have a problem because if you care about fuel efficiency do not buy this car you're buying this car to rev the nuts out of this motor and have fun just get the mpi and say one and a half lakh rupees Yeah, I don't dump the clutch here because if I dump, there will be some amount of judder. What I do is, I leave it very gradually and when I leave it gradually, then it has that massive wheel spin you just heard of. So I was telling you get the MPI if you don't care about performance because of course the MPI has very sluggish performance. But you know what? It has the same bone and stroke which means that it has the same 999cc displacement, 3 cylinder engine. So not much to compare in terms of displacement. But obviously a world of difference in terms of performance like i told you the figures how much more powerful this tsi is when compared to the mpi but the range actually starts at seven lakhs on road for the comfort line which comes with the mpi actually there are five variants on offer two for the mpi one for the tsi and two for the tsi automatic okay so seven lakhs for the base variant actually not the comfort line trend line is the basic variant which is priced to be 7 lakhs on road Mumbai base variant with an MPI engine. Then, if you want to upgrade to the Comfort Line Plus variant, which is the next variant in line, it costs an additional 1.08 lakhs. Yeah, 8.08 lakhs on road Mumbai for that one, which is again an MPI engine. But if you want to shift to this engine, which is the third in the variant lineup and this is the only tsi manual this is priced at rupees 9.54 lakhs a premium of 1.45 lakhs which is a significant premium but you also get more features and a better engine all these things and if you want to go for the automatic another 1.3 lakhs for the automatic and if you want to go for the gt over the automatic that's another 54,000. so the price range is between 7 lakhs and 11.37 lakhs on road mumbai I will be very 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 frank with you I have never been a fan of the GT DSI because of that DSG gearbox I never like DSG I love shifting my own gears and this is a car which brings absolute delight in that sense because it is so much fun like you can see how quick it is with direction changes body roll is well contained the balance the poise the grip levels everything is fab and the engine of course loves to punch in the mid range you're going to enjoy driving this car a lot in fact the GT DSI and will never ever miss I know yeah it was more refined because it was four cylinder this is three cylinder that is without a doubt a refinement level i would give it to the gt tsi but this one is so punchy so much fun and definitely you know put some massive smile on your face the smile on your face is so big it's so big you know four of my teeth popped out because of the rather obnoxious smile i was having by driving this car that is the level of fun this like i told you is almost a second faster compared to the gt tsi from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour from 0 to 150 kilometers per hour this is almost five seconds faster and uh, that's not only because of the torque like 5 newton meters won't make a much of a difference as such but i think it's also to do with the fact that this car is lighter because the automatic gearbox is obviously heavier and this car has a better gearbox as well all that plays a big difference now this car is carrying a 45 liter fuel tank which is decent enough for the size but don't really expect good efficiency from it because you're going to rev the nuts out of this motor you will love to enjoy this car and that's where this car absolutely shines this is a pure driver's car it's a delight to drive it's so punchy it's so much fun and the best thing is if you want to make a quick overtake on the highway you're driving in fifth gear like right now you're driving in fifth gear and you see there's a slow truck right in front of you okay what you do you give a right indicator you let the traffic pass you get into second gear we are at 50 kilometers per hour and you bang open the throttle look at this okay yeah baby that is what i'm talking about what 
an engine supremely tall gear the ratios are so well selected i love the fact that it touches 100 km per hour in second gear itself but on the v box you have to take another shift to third because there's some error obviously in the speedometer so as i see it the volkswagen polo ts has an absolute fab machine don't go for the automatic the automatics are not on sale yet i think they've announced it but they've not started deliveries it's a 6 speed torque converter gearbox for the convenience yes but this is a car which is all about fun and in terms of driving fun the polo ts i have puts a massive smile on your face it's a brilliant car it still retains the old world charm of the polo now don't compare it with modern rivals which obviously have more features are more modern because in the time there has been one generation of the polo in india which is this was launched in 2010 we are in 2020 right now in 10 years the swift has changed two freaking generations so what do you expect a lot of features are going to be missing and obviously a new generation of the polo was launched globally in 2017 as well so yeah this car is dated but doesn't feel as dated because still it has the old world charm of vw cars which is understated elegance both outside inside and a great build quality as well this is still a driver's delight a three cylinder engine which really punches way above its weight and that's what makes this polo such a brilliant car now peace of mind is something which all of us seek for and vw is trying its best to give us peace of mind as well because this car comes with 4 years 1 lakh kilometer warranty whichever is earlier obviously and that's also a brilliant warranty obviously it also comes with three free services and when i talk about three free services i need to downshift because here we go oh my god you just look at the tachometer it bounces up so fast in fact somewhere between 5000 rpm it really pushes hard i think peak power is produced between 5000 to 5500 rpm and that really bodes well for the vehicle the car gets three free services as well first is obviously a basic inspection it's called swagger second is value inspection which again is like an inspection and third which happens so first is 1000 km second is 7500 km third is 15000 km which is the actual service you won't be charged for labor but obviously you have to pay for the consumer bills that is the first free service sort of a thingy but forget the service and all that stuff let's talk about the roadside assistance which is also quite nice because it comes with a four years roadside assistance wherein you will be covered for any sort of breakdown so in case you have a breakdown they will obviously send a car to retrieve you they will give you a complimentary car and they will also book your hotel stay so that is the level of confidence vw has in its cars that you know what it's not going to break down that is absolute fab of course with a manual they can have that confidence the six speed manual the mpi is a five speed manual gearbox could be slicker shifting but I love the feel of driving a manual gearbox. This is what makes a big difference in this Volkswagen Polo. The feel of driving is absolutely amplified in this vehicle. Feels nice, sharp, agile, fun, peppy, peppy in the sense that not the one which I always keep eating, but when I say peppy, it's more to do with the fact that this car feels like it doesn't bog down at lower speeds yeah it doesn't have that punch because the turbo takes its own sweet time to spool up but once spooled up you know what here we are in second gear spooled up and off we go this is what i'm talking about what an engine what an engine what a car what brilliant the chassis balance the composure all this is what you're paying for with a vw not for gimmicks like push button start then connected car tech maybe or all this because this car does not need connected car it connects to you directly it doesn't need a software to connect to you it's direct connection that's how brilliant it is what a machine i love it to the core and back the vw polo has always been a delight and it will always be and it's a good thing that vw i mean they've offered eight engines in this car okay let's start with the base one they launched the car in 2010 with 1.2 liter petrol they came up with the 1.2 liter diesel both these engines were obviously three cylinder engine then they came up with the 1.6 liter gt tdi which they took the 1.6 liter diesel with 105 horsepower from the vento i believe and they plonked it in the polo which was an absolute rocket ship i took it to goa okay with full luggage and trust me the car absolutely we pulled ahead it was so much fun i loved it and i had a mercedes a class at that time i was like no i'm going to take the polo because the polo's punch is so good and satisfying as well then the fourth engine is of course the gt tsi is 1.2 liter tsi motor after that they discontinued the 1.6 gt tdi because obviously tax benefit so they came up with the 1.5 liter tdi engine which was available in two states of tune one was 90 horsepower one was 105 horsepower for the gt variant the gt tdi and that was six engine then they came up with the 1 liter mpi in this polo which is the seventh engine and this particular car which i'm driving happens to be the eighth engine with 1 liter tsi motor now i have not even spoken about the automatics in between okay obviously this gets a torque converter so another powertrain that becomes the ninth engine so many engines in one car well that's brilliant you know what vw and bajaj are so common just turn the logo turn this logo you get the bajaj logo both of them are doing the same bajaj also puts multiple engines in one bike dominar 250 dominar 400 dominar 125 dominar 150 dominar 160 dominar 180 dominar 200 dominar 220 okay this is actually the pulsar just replace the dominar with the pulsar and you will get my drift as well so the polo what a delight what a car and i'm glad to say 
that the car still retains its charm of being a driver's delight and this is the only car which has stood the test of time unlike the Baleno RS and the Abad Punto which came which saw didn't conquer and left as well and on that utter disappointment it's time to end thank you so much for watching if you like this video you know what you have to do give it a thumbs up now how did you like the car it's peppy it's light it's good it's peppy it's cheese balls it's picnic it's what is it exactly or it's a mcdonald's french fries it's good it's nice it's light and peppy you like it more than the duster dono alag alag hai yaar no so duster also has a 1.3 liter turbo petrol engine which produces 156 horsepower with a compact suv ha it's nice चलो बाय बाय ऑब्वियसली मेरी डस्टर अच्छी है मेरी डस्टर मेरी डस्टर है नॉट ऑफ योर डस्टर मेरी डस्टर नहीं अच्छी होगी तो किसकी होगी हां